a select amount of us may have hypertension, a select amount of us may have diabetes or heart disease. But one thing that connects us, every single human being in this planet, is sleep. No end shall come to the good that he has done. It was like I had met Yoda. I walked in and I saw him and I was like, starstruck. Like he's like a rock star, like this dude is just. He's a tour de force. I would say he can be intimidating at the beginning. He's a little mischievous too. He always said that you are the future. He loved humans, he loved people, he loved, uh, he loved uh, wine. <laughs> Everybody knows that he is a wine connoisseur. Oh boy, I have really come to the right department. <laughs> He was the first one there and the last one to leave. I couldn't believe how much he loved sleep. I think he may have loved it more than he loved any other person. I've never seen anything like that in the realm of medicine. I always felt very confident that fellows who came to Stanford would get the, the very best uh, from Chris John, who is just a great mentor. He, probably more than anyone else, uh, helped us understand what sleep apnea is and established it as part of, of medicine. Most importantly, his work was in trying to bring our attention to issues of sleep as early on in the lifespan as possible. His dedication to Understanding sleep disorders in children is unmatched. I was asked by the Nobel Committee to nominate him for a Nobel Prize in 2002. He, he had that kind of international reputation. It was, it was really about helping everybody who came through, no matter what status they were, no matter you know, what was going on, and learning more to be able to help them even further. And, People came from all over the place to be able to um, be seen by CG. And beyond a legend, he had a passion for his patients. He treated each one with such passion and caring. You know, it was like this, this um, flurry of energy, um, but it was always a passionate um, connection to the patients and the staff and the fellows. He loved the fellows. What is important is the zest with which he imparts information. I haven't met anybody who didn't like CG. When he first met me, he looks at me and he says, Bill, he says, you have it. And I said, I have what? He said, you have sleep apnea. I said, no, I don't. He said, yes, you do. Obviously, Friday afternoons, if you ask any fellow, were one of the best times we would bond, have wine and cheese and hang out and bond and, um, just very special moments that, you know, we all will look back and uh, cherish. He's the father of sleep medicine, and he expects that the rest of, the, of, the, of our generation will continue to further advance sleep medicine. Uh, Christian Gumino's legacy is going to be us and how Many of us uh, took so much from him and hopefully gave back so much to him throughout his life. Well, I think his legacy is going to be the discovery and naming of obstructive sleep apnea, of rapid eye movements. I don't think there are going to be very many people that could follow in his footsteps because he's just, he was larger than life. He just had this um, excitement and passion about sleep that, um, you know, touched us all. His legacy will create a wave of people discovering things about sleep that actually will exponentially change how we treat sleep, how we look at it, and how we basically create a worldwide awareness for it. I think there's a lot of undiagnosed people and what he started, people, everyone that he's taught, all his students are just going to carry that information forward and hopefully help a bunch of people get better sleep. His legacy will be the journal that uh, he and Bill Demen started. In the future, the surgeons will develop more and more uh, 
procedures that will literally cure the illness. What do you hope is going to happen in the next five to ten years? That people will see more children and that people will see them will see and understand that we must give children an opportunity to sleep. That sleep is, a, is as an important function in our life as daytime functioning. Sleep is the yin to the yang of our daylight functioning.